Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, Wednesday. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Did you survive the 4th of July? High energy. Morning, Terry in Philadelphia. Maple Temple, good morning. Tammy Holloway, good morning. Raleigh, North Carolina. Maple, we miss you. I saw Adrian on here. Good morning, Adrian. Erlene, good morning. Midway Airport check-in. Well, have fun with that. Louisiana, good morning. Hope you have a good trip wherever you're going. Monica, Mississippi, good morning. Got the job, all right. Bridget in Richmond Park, good morning. Michelle Aikens, got that cup of coffee, good morning. What it do, Jonathan? Good morning, good morning, Tanisha. Good morning, Tanisha. we are missing you too, I haven't seen you lately. Sharice, good morning. Henderson, Nevada. Good morning, good morning. How'd y'all do on the 4th of July? Did you make it? Did you have a good day? Enjoy your family, your friends, whoever you were with? Maybe you were by yourself. Did you have a good day? It was quiet for you? Okay. Yeah, good eats. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Clean you out your closet. <laughs> Find any fireworks in the closet? <laughs> Y'all enjoy the fireworks? All right, good morning. Good morning. What did you have to eat? What did you have to eat? What did you have to eat? Did you do some grilling? Our uh, our kids were over at our house, grandkids, and they had some friends of theirs with them. And uh, then our next door neighbors came over. We had a few people at the house, so it was good. I'd, I had purchased some stuff to grill, and uh, then our daughter, Christine, she comes over. And she's got five, these five giant pieces of catfish, five of them. And then she has 10 pieces of salmon, 10, 10, <laughs> ten pieces of salmon. I said, Christine, what are you doing? Oh, Lord. Anyway, some people took some food home, so uh, I guess it was good. I guess it was good, but it was fun cooking it. I enjoy grilling. I enjoy cooking, so... Uh, it was all right. We had a good day. Hope you had a good day. Hope it was safe for you. Hope the kids had a great time. Oh, yeah. You had the ribs, hamburgers, chicken, hot dogs. You had the whole deal. Okay. All right. I know. I know. I know. Okay. All right. I hope the fourth was a good day for you. And even the third. I know a lot of places had fireworks on the third of July. So I hope that that worked out for you as well. Well, here we are. We're on Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. Uh, if you are a part of Cornerstone, remember we don't have anything going on tonight, uh, so please keep that in mind. For the whole month of July, nothing on Wednesday nights. We'll be meeting on Sundays, but nothing on Wednesday nights. So Cornerstone people, keep that in mind. Nothing happening at Cornerstone tonight. Nothing at all. All right. Uh, I want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning about our intelligence factor, our potential for intelligence. And um, I also want to tell you that what is working for you, what is working for you, is more than what is not working for you. I want you to get that, in, get that going in your thought this morning. What is working for you is more than what is not working for you. 
Sometimes we get caught up in the snare of noticing everything that is not working for us, uh, everything that seems to be falling apart, everything that seems to be a failure, everything that is not producing, and, we, and we're focusing on all of that stuff, and we forget about the fact that what is working for us, what is working for you, is more than what is working, or excuse me, than what is not working for you. Uh, so let's begin to think in a positive realm and more of an optimistic, faith-filled realm. What is working for you? What is working for you? I uh, recently read a story about a young athlete, a track and field athlete. He was in a, in a uh, high jump category of track and field. And while he was training, the athlete was experiencing some difficulty in jumping over a particular height. It was like he had reached his limit and he couldn't, he couldn't get over the bar at this particular height. And so he got a little freaked out about it, got psyched out about it, and he would run close to the bar and then he would measure himself against the bar and then he would go back to the starting point. And he got into a rut of doing this over and over and over and over. So after attempting the height on the high jump and then hesitating several times, he asked his coach, how am I going to get over this bar? How am I gonna, how am I gonna jump this height? I, I feel like I should be able to get over it, but uh, I don't know how. I don't know how to get over this height. And the coach's response was, you've got to throw your heart over the bar first, and then your body will go over it. Isn't that great? Son, you've got to throw your, bar, your, your heart over the bar first, and then your body will follow. And so whatever you're facing today, where it seems like you've hit a ceiling, you've hit a limitation, you, you've hit an area where you, you know you should be going farther, but you don't seem to be able to break through and go farther. I want to encourage you today to throw your heart over the bar first, and then everything else will follow. So in that regard, Psalm 37, Psalm 37, verses 3 through 5 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Powerful statement, Psalm 37. And then in Psalm 20 and verse 4, the scripture says, may God grant you according to your heart's desire. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. And fulfill all your purpose. That's Psalm 20 and verse 4. So here's the deal. You can't really add value to the world around you if you don't believe you have value to give. So check that out. Come on, let that, let that begin to marinate in your mind. You can't add value to your world if you don't believe that you have value. So I want to encourage you today to realize the value that God has placed in your life as a human being. You're the only part of creation that God said, I'm crowning you with glory and honor. He did not crown your dog with glory and honor. He didn't crown your cat with glory and honor. He didn't crown your goldfish with glory and honor. It's you, the human being made in his image and his likeness. You have been crowned with glory and honor. That's what sets you apart. And therefore, you do have value. You have something to offer to the world around you. You do have the ability to solve problems. You do have the ability to create produce, fashion, new things. But in order to do that, you're going to have to believe it. 
You're going to have to believe that you have that value in your life. Every human being is gifted one way or the other to solve problems for other people and to meet needs. Every human being is gifted in that way. You have the ability to solve problems and you have the ability to meet the needs of people. You have that going for you. So you've got to use your gifts to allow God to express himself through you. Now here's where it starts getting meaty for us. The starting point, the starting point is that you have got to believe, you've got to believe that you are gifted and you have something to give to your world. You've got to believe that. So the question is, how do you, how do you release that? How do you unleash that in the world? Well, I want to tell you, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the activator of supernatural competence in your life. So be filled with the Holy Spirit. And here's the deal. You and the Holy Spirit cannot be anything less than genius. You and the Holy Spirit cannot be anything less than genius. That's powerful. God has shaped you to be a genius in the earth. Same for me. So I, I think it's time for us to start tapping into that genius level and manifesting the genius of God, the intelligence of God in the earth through the things we say, through the things that we do. There's a guy named Howard Gardner, G-A-R-D-N-E-R, Howard Gardner, who has written quite a bit about multiple intelligences, multiple intelligences. And Mr. Gardner says that intelligence is the capacity to solve problems and to create or fashion things that will be valued in one or more cultures. Are you hearing that this morning? Intelligence. Intelligence. Bring it back down a bit now. Come on, watch this. <laughs> Intelligence is the capacity to solve problems. The capacity to solve problems and to create or fashion things that will be valued in more than one cultural setting. That's what intelligence is all about, according to Howard Gardner. Now, Howard Gardner lists seven different intelligences that we need to pay attention to. Seven different intelligences. The first one he calls linguistic intelligence, which involves spoken and written language. Linguistic intelligence is used by writers and poets, lawyers, law, uh, attorneys, speakers. Uh, linguistic intelligence, the use of words, the use of language. Then he has listed logical mathematical intelligence. Logical mathematical intelligence. This is the ability to analyze problems logically and to solve those problems and come up with solutions. This type of intelligence is most often associated with scientific and mathematical thinking. Scientific and mathematical thinking. Then there is something called musical intelligence. Musical intelligence. And Howard Gardner says that musical intelligence involves skill in the performance, in the composition, and the appreciation of musical patterns. Musical patterns. Musical intelligence is uh, involved with almost uh, every kind of structural parallel to linguistic intelligence, the use of words, the use of language. Then Mr. Gardner says there is bodily kinesthetic intelligence, <clears throat> which involves the potential of using your whole body 
using your physical being, the parts of your body, to solve problems. You can use your mental abilities to coordinate bodily movements. So the mental aspect of your life and the physical aspect of your life are related to one another. Then according to Howard Gardner, there is a spatial intelligence. I think this is number five. A spatial intelligence, which is your ability to recognize and use the patterns of wide space and more confined space. So you're able to look at wide space and confined space and see ways to use it for the good of yourself and the good of people. Then there is interpersonal intelligence, which involves the ability to relate to other people. Relationships, the ability to understand the intentions, the motivations, the desires that other people have. So interpersonal intelligence is involved with people who are educators, salespeople, uh, pastors, religious leaders that deal a lot with people, political leaders that need to relate to people, counselors that need to be able to listen to people. All of those different realms of activity and, and expertise and skill are involved with interpersonal uh, intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, you and other people. And then number seven is the intrapersonal intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence, which is the capacity to understand yourself. You're able to look internally, you're able to look in your, into your soul, and you understand yourself, you appreciate your feelings, your emotions, you understand your fears, what causes you to be afraid of something, and you also understand your motivations. You know what stops you and you know what gets you going. That is the effective working model of yourself and the ability to regulate your own life. That is intra, intrapersonal intelligence. So Howard Gardner gives us these seven realms of intelligence, seven intelligences, and he is sharing with us how we can reach and activate the potential for our own intelligence. And the potential of intelligence is way beyond, way, way beyond what we're actually using right now. I think it was Albert Einstein that said we're only using about 10% of our brain. Think of what you could accomplish if you could increase that to 20%, 30%, 50% of your brain. Think of the kind of being that Adam was before he sinned. Perfection in a human body. Perfection with a human mind. Unlimited intellectual capacity. Isn't that amazing? The kind of being that Adam was, that God would trust him to name all of the animals. That God would say, whatever you say they are, Adam, that is what we will call them. What tremendous intelligence that Adam was carrying in his life. And I want you to know today that you have that same potential. The same potential for intelligence. So I'm saying, let's begin to tap into it. Let's begin to stir it up and become the whole people that God intended for us to be when he made us. You are God's masterpiece, according to Ephesians 2 and verse 10. You're his work of art, you're his poet, you're his, uh, you're his poem, you're his sonnet. He has written you, he has designed you, he has painted you, he has put you in the earth to represent him, and to do so with high intelligence and strong spirit. I appreciate you today. I'm grateful for you. I love you. Thanks for being on with me. Thank you so much. I hope this day after the 4th of July is going to be effective for you, productive for you. You have open doors in front of you. You have opportunities. You have divine connections, divine resources. You have favor with God and man. 
Have a wonderful day today. Cornerstone, remember, we have nothing going on tonight, okay? Have a great day. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Talk to you soon.